you know what's fun to do? Hunt for rare items. Well, I guess some people would find it more tedious than anything, but it's satisfying to collect stuff that's hard to find. A perfect example would be Pokemon of Shiny Hunting, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about Earthbound and its 1 in 128 item drops. There are many enemies that have a chance of dropping an item, well, 1 in 128th of the time. While you can find most of them in presents or even buy them in stores, it's still a very popular challenge that mother fans like to attempt. So I thought, why not discuss just that? But hold it, doesn't this seem familiar? You may have seen a countdown of the rarest Earthbound items already. Well, I'm pulling another Did You Know Gaming, because I made a top 5 hardest items to find in Earthbound list on my old channel. But I feel like that video didn't age well, like, at all, which is why I wanted to remake it. Before I get into the list, I should probably clarify a couple things just so we're all on the same page. First of all, what do I mean by a 1 in 128 item? Well, a majority of the enemies in Earthbound have a chance of dropping something when defeated. The Spiteful Crows, for example, have a 100% chance of giving tokies after defeat, or 128 in 128. The lowest chance is, of course, 1 in 128. The Wayne item drop is determined as by none other than a speedrunner's best friend, RNG. The RNG changes by opening menus, walking, or doing just about anything. The reason I mention this is because item drops are decided as soon as you touch an enemy. So, if you were to make a safe date at the beginning of a fight, you don't receive the item and you reload, you're never going to succeed. However, if you create one right before entering battle, you can manipulate the RNG and produce different results, giving you an actual chance to find what you're looking for. The qualifications for this list are 1. The item can't be bought in stores 2. The item isn't obtainable through gift boxes and 3. The item is only dropped by enemies. So, yes, the rarest item drop overall is the Horn of Life from the Manly Fish's brother. However, you can buy Horns of Life with the Lost Underworld in Saturn Valley, removing it from the list. So when you really break it down, there are just a handful of goods in this game that are actually uncommon. Anyways, let's get into what was chosen for the rarest items in Earthbound. But first, the chosen ones that barely didn't make it, the honorable mentions. First are actually two items, the Meteotite and Meteornium. I didn't include them because many enemies can drop these items, and some have a higher chance than others. But interestingly, the Meteornium is rarer despite being less valuable. And aside from those, it's the Broken Antenna. This originally made number 5, but the other items outclass it to take it off. Plus, the only thing really annoying about hunting for this item is that the uncontrollable spheres explode after defeat, but if you're in the Lumine Hall, you can just heal up at the Tenda Village whenever you want. Now for what you've all been waiting for. Well, this is surprising. What was previously at the top of the first list has now dropped to the bottom, the Sword of Kings. This item is very long sought after. It's Pooh's only weapon in the game, and there are tons of guides dedicated solely to finding it. However, it's much simpler than you would think. For one, it's easy to tell the Starman enemies apart from the others, since they have a unique sprite. Plus, getting green scrolled on them isn't difficult, so if you just reload the enemies by walking off screen and healing when necessary, you can obtain the weapon fast. But I should note, if you defeat the Starman Deluxe before hunting for the Sword of Kings, you're screwed. No more enemies will appear here, and the Starman Super is exclusive to the Stonehenge base. It is obnoxious to deal with the uncontrollable sphere self-destructing all the time, but at least you can heal easily. The Starman Super enemy may be simple to take out, but trying to stay healthy means wasting tons of PP or backtracking all the way to Dr. Anna's lab, which is why I think the Sword of Kings is harder to find overall. But hey, it's at least worth the effort. The Sword of Kings increases Pooh's offense by 30 and gives him the inability to miss. Necessary? No. But helpful? Definitely. <laughs> Below even further than that is the Magic Fry Pan. This can only be dropped by the Chompasaur enemy, which is far from a pushover. They have three forms of PK fire as well as two strong regular attacks, and they have a physical shield up at the start of battles. I'm not even sure if you can get a green scroll on them due to how powerful they are. Because of that, I have no interest in hunting for one of these things. Don't get me wrong, the Magic Fry Pan is dang good. It does only increase Paula's offense by 50 and causes her batch attack to be more inaccurate, but her guts is buffed by 100. She's more of a PSI sweeper anyways, and that increased guts makes up for how fragile she is. But since you can buy the Holy Fry Pan in the exact same area where you find Chomp Swords, I'd stick with that instead. Unless you're that devoted to finding this rare drop or you're as lucky as Chugga Conroy was. <laughs> You'd have to be a psycho to go for enough of these, or in this case a major psycho. The star pendant is only dropped by the major psychic psycho. I had trouble deciding whether to put the magic fry pan or this at number 4, but you should know how it turned out in the end. 
Anyways, the major psychic psycho can only be found in the Fire Spring, the final year sanctuary location. The reason why I think it's harder to find than the Magic Fry Pan is because, one, the major psychic psycho only spawns with the psychic psycho, and even then it's not always guaranteed to be with it. Two, the overworld sprites for all the enemies in the Fire Spring are the exact same. And three, the vanilla psychic psycho also has a chance of dropping something, a PSI caramel. So, it could very likely take priority over the star pennant, which just causes it to be more of a nuisance to hunt for. Jeez, how many times have I said psycho? I thought maybe the star pennant would be worth the time and effort, since it does protect against freeze, fire, flash, and paralysis. While it is the only pendant that prevents paralysis, and there are quite a few enemies after this point that can paralyze the party, I still don't think it's rewarding enough. Plus, not only can you buy Earth Pendants and Magicant, but a gift box in the Lost Underworld contains a Sea Pendant. Earth Pendant isn't that challenging anyway, so it's really up to you whether you think this item is useful or not. Here we have the only item that never appeared in the original list, the Goddess Ribbon. I don't know what I was thinking, because it deserves a spot! This item is actually pretty similar to the Magic Fry Pan in a lot of ways, both her drops for Pollen, they're arguably her best items. The Goddess Ribbon increases Paula's defense by 110, the most of any ribbons in the game. However, it's only dropped by the Ghost of Starman, which is downright the most annoying enemy here since they have both forms of Star Storm. Their attack pattern is predictable, sure, but you'll waste so much PP trying to take this stupid thing out. On the right side, they appear in Onet, so you can just heal your house whenever your team is unhealthy. With the nail in the coffin, the Ghost of Starman has the exact same overworld sprite as the other two enemies that spawn here, Splatoon Boss and Mike Wazowski. Oh, and did I mention, they also have a chance of an item drop. Just don't bother hunting for the Goddess Ribbon, the amount of time and effort it'll take isn't worth it. Besides, the Saturn Ribbon is just fine and has some advantages over the Goddess Ribbon anyways, like increased luck. And best of all, you don't find it through killing obnoxious enemies! How is this not number one before? The Gutsy Bat is hands down the rarest item to find in Earthbound. Where do I even begin? The Gutsy Bat is only dropped by the Bionic Kraken, which can only be found in the Cave of the Past. To make matters worse, the Bionic Kraken is rare in of itself, not only blending in with other enemies in the overworld, but it has a very specific location. It seems to only spawn around Gaius Bay, so good luck returning to the Fates of Storder to save if you can find it. Not even the Earthbound Player's Guide could get us facts right. They claimed the Gutsy Bat was only found by the Krakens in the Sea of Eden. Not only would that have made this weapon even rarer, but jeez, I feel bad for anyone who took that information. I was debating putting the Goddess Ribbon here, because the Bionic Kraken isn't too annoying to fight. It only appears by itself, so you can just kill it with a couple bash attacks, but due to the rarity of the enemy itself, I thought it deserved to be at the top. It's not like the Gutsy Bat is worth the suffering anyways. Yeah, it is Ness's best weapon, as it increases offense by 100 and guts by 127. Too bad at this point, the only fight left is Gygus, who you don't finish off regularly. Maybe it could be convenient if you're worried about nest dying, but the payoff is still way too minimal. The legendary bat is leagues more practical, no pun intended, and you find that from a gift box. I will say, I have a ton of respect for anyone who went through the pain of hunting for the gutsy bat, because the amount of patience you need is insane. But if you were incredibly lucky and somehow got the weapon on your first try, then I loathe you. No need to fear, because now you know what I believe are the rarest items in Earth found in a less outdated form. Maybe I could do something like this for the other Mother games, I'm not sure. Or I could do other types of countdowns for the series. Or heck, I could make anything about the games, it has been a while. But anyways, until next time, this is Blue Nintendo trying to force more Earthbound on people's throats.